Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to try to attempt to draw two pictures at the same time. You ready? All right, let's do it. Let's, I don't even know what I'm going to draw. Let's draw like a cross here at the same time, both hands. Yeah. Drawing a cross up. Okay, that's not looking too good there. Let, let's try to draw like a hill on the bottom, you know, sitting on a hill. Uh, okay, and like robe, you know, like kind of the robe where the cross had a robe somewhere. And then uh, then there's like this little sign on the top, I think, right, right up around here somewhere. Then we can draw some clouds and then uh, maybe a sun. If you can't tell, I'm right-handed. And even if you're ambidextrous, I'm sorry, but you cannot paint two pictures at one time. Because your mind, heart, and soul can't be focused on both, if you can't tell. So today, we're going to be talking about this. Man, that looks better. Well, I know it was a little bit different having a picture to look at first when you're starting off the video, but it's really representation of what we're going to be talking about today concerning you can't paint two pictures at one time. Well, sometimes we don't understand what analogies like these mean, but I think that you'll understand once we get a little bit deeper into it. I think a lot of times throughout our life, we find the two different kinds of people in the world. You know, you're either for God or you're not for God. But especially in the day and age in which we live, I believe that we find three kind of people. And that's the kind that want to live for God, the kind that just doesn't live for God, and then the kind that try to live both ways. And, you know, as the Bible says, you can't serve both God and money. You can't serve both God and the world at the same time, trying to live double-faced lives and try to paint two pictures and two representations of who you are at the same time. I think we fail at that. And that's one of those things in our life where we are blinded by an extra set of eyes. Let's learn to be who God's called us to be by beginning with a scripture in the book of James. So let's go to the book of James, chapter uh, 1, 5 through 8 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask Him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with a divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So I want to break it up just a minute here and talk about what this verse implies first, and that is wisdom. So I want to talk a little bit about wisdom and its opposite, which is foolishness. The Bible describes godly wisdom as follows in James chapter 3, 17, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy. It is full of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. You see, wise people, they're marked by deep understanding, keen discernment. They're able to think in the situations and make wise decisions concerning them. But then the Bible describes the opposite side of that as foolish. Unwise people, foolish people are lacking. They're lacking in sense. They're lacking in judgment or discretion and irreverent. And that's not to say that we live with all kinds of foolish people in terms of their intellect. We're talking about foolishness in their decision making and the way that they view life. Mark chapter 7 says, Foolishness is considered one of the many sinful and selfish aspects of the human nature and the human heart. And among them, it lies lust and adultery and murder and, you know, all these other things that you probably get the point by now of what I'm talking about, how foolishness is not what God wants. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness. And then they are angry at the Lord. That's found in Proverbs 13 or 19, 3. What does all of this mean? How does it relate to the two pictures that you saw at the beginning? How does it represent two lives that those pictures are representing? How does it, you know, how does it uh, even tie in to the subject of being, you know, two people amidst society? You know, this person at church and this person at school and this person at home and this person at work or this person, you know, in this place and another person somewhere else. Because I find within the world a lot of people who try to do that, who try to be this person here and this person here. And so nobody really knows who you are and you're not able to be who God's called you to be because you're trying to be two different people that God never intended you to have to be them both. And you can't be them both. Let's keep going. 
You see, Jay begins his discussion about loyalty with a word on asking for wisdom. He says that divided loyalty to lives hampers the request of gaining godly wisdom. Now, I don't know about you, but I want godly wisdom. But I think a lot of times in our life we find people who want to question, why do I care if I have godly wisdom? I mean, what's wrong with you know having the four eyes and the two faces, the two lives? Well, the foolish decision of living a double-faced life builds up and builds up and builds up in more foolishness. So eventually you're going to be armed on Satan's side of the battlefield, going against God and going against maybe even your own family or the people that's on God's side because you tried to live both of them at the same time until eventually you were just pushed down the wrong path and you decided to take the ugly picture like my left hand created and be on Satan's side of the army. You see, you grow in the life that you choose. And James or Jesus said, Every plant not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted, so ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind, and if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. That's found in Matthew chapter 15, 13 through 14. As Jesus said in Matthew 15, blinded people lead blinded people until they both fall. But then you have the opposite side. Let's not look at the blind negative side of things. Let's look at the other side of the face, the right hand picture that looks a whole lot better. And let's look at this one. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and they will reap a harvest of righteousness. You see, the life that you live greatly affects the life that others live. And Isaiah the prophet, God was speaking to him, talking about himself in this prophecy to Isaiah, talking about the spiritually blind people that Jesus would speak of hundreds of years later. Isaiah says in 29, 13, These people say they are mine. They honor me, God, with their lips, they, but their hearts, they are far from me. You see, a lot of times people are living two different lives, trying to be you know, who God wants them to be and the world wants them to be at the same time, living double-faced, you know, four eyes, if you get the point in the analogy there, is the problem that you know, their hearts, they're far from me. You know, they come to church still because why? They, because they want to look the part, they want to be the part. They look the part, all right, the Pharisees did. The, these blind guides that Jesus was talking about, they definitely looked the part. You know, they were following all the rules. They were following all the regulations. They were being who God wanted them to be, but they were missing the main point, and that is Jesus. They were missing what really matter, and that is the heart, because Jesus wants to enter our heart and change us completely to where we're not just being the part and looking all right, but we are truly right, right here at the heart. And so our life is not double-faced, or it's not on the negative side, but it's on the positive side of things, like the right hand was creating here, in my case, the much more beautiful side, and that is following Jesus. So therefore, living this foolish, double-faced life may look innocent on the outside, but what about the heart? I want you to ask yourself that question. I want you to leave with some encouragement as you face the temptations to give in to two-faced living because it's definitely around us. And I see people change into it. And I've seen people that, you know, will start to come out of it. But which one are you today? Hopefully you are on the positive side and hopefully you're following Jesus. But sometimes we find ourselves trying to go towards the middle and trying to find a middle ground between the two which is ultimately something that blinds us. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. You see, sometimes those people in your life that seem like your best friends are actually your greatest enemies in this, in this guys. Now, I'm not saying that about any of my friends, so don't start you know, thinking that I'm getting that wisdom from you. But I'm getting this because God spoke this to me. Because sometimes in our life, when we're trying to decide, you know, what kind of word are we going to follow? What family side are we going to be? Are we going to be the Christian side of the family? Are we going to be the side that's not? You know, we find that in divorced uh, families a lot. And I can only imagine, you know, how hard that would be to decide which, you know, which one you're going to live on. Well, the ultimate decision is yours. And the way that you can help make that is to understand that the people in your life are greatly influential in that. And when you go to school or when you go to work and you find friends, you know, your friends that's pushing you and, and trying to get you to go different ways, they seem like your best friends, but they could ultimately be your demise. They could be the ones that would push you to match their own blindness and you could both fall into that ditch. But sometimes we don't see that. Sometimes we don't see that because we're blinded by that other set of eyes. You see, when you're blind, obviously you can't see. 
So when you're trying to live two different lives at one time, you may think you can see even more because you have four eyes. But in reality, you can't see God's wisdom coming through instead of foolishness. And instead, you end up in that foolishness and begin falling down the path exactly not what God intended for you to be down, what He did not call you to be on. So when we lay down the other brush, or the other pen in my case, and you begin to pull away the other picture, the other paper, when we surrender the other life to Jesus, we finally begin to see. And when we begin to paint the picture that He has called us to, we begin to, li- to live the life He has called us to, and we allow the other picture, the negative, ungodly part of our life to be taken away, we surrender the God uh, purpose-filled life to Him, and we allow the two eyes to come back so we can see again and we can live out the wisdom that God is providing us. Proverbs 12, 28 says, The way of the godly leads to life. That path does not lead to death. That's a promise of the Bible that you don't have to live a double-faced life, nor do you have to live the life of the world, but you can live the life of Christ. God bless you guys. We will be back. (laughs) 